Welcome to part six of this training series. In this section, we will introduce you to the technical aspects of doing causal loop diagrams. To do a basic causal loop diagram, you need to be familiar with at least these five key concepts. Stock variables, flow variables, link polarities, positive and negative, feedback loops, balancing and reinforcing, and time delays. This video is intended to introduce you to the concepts, and in the next video, we'll reinforce these concepts using the modeling of the case study. So don't worry if you don't fully understand all the terminology by the end of this video. To better understand what these are, I'm going to work through a simple model that was provided to the participants during the workshop prior to doing the actual modeling activity. The problem of interest was population size. There are two main variables that influence population size, births and deaths. So my three variables in the model will be population size, births and deaths. A stock variable is something that can accumulate over time. In this case, our stock variable is population size. We'll put this variable in a box which indicates it's a stock variable. Populations can get bigger and accumulate over time. In contrast, Births and deaths do not accumulate over time. Rather, they are the variables that the change flows through. So we call them flow variable variables. The link polarities represent the causal relationship between the variables. Or another way of looking at them is that they're if-then statements. Thinking back to the connection circle activity, we can ask ourselves which variables have a causal relationship, meaning changes in one variable causes changes in another variable. Population size affects birth. The bigger the population size, the more births that are likely to occur. So an if-then statement would be, if the population size increases, then the births increase. An arrow from population size to births denotes a causal relationship. Now we have to add the polarity sign, which is either a plus for positive or a minus for negative. If a causal relationship is positive, it means both variables move in the same direction. If the cause goes up, then the, then the effect goes up. And if the cause goes down, then the effect goes down. Whereas in a negative polarity, the variables move inversely. If the cause goes up, then the effect goes down, and if the cause goes down, then the effect goes up. In this first causal relationship, if the population size increases, then the number of births will also increase, and if the population size were to decrease, then the births will also decrease. This is a positive relationship, because both variables are moving in the same direction. We put a plus sign by the arrowhead to denote it's a positive link. There's also a causal relationship in the other direction. As the number of births increase, the population size also increases. This is also a positive causal link. Now, how does population size and death affect each other? Well, as population size increases, the number of deaths will also increase. This again is a positive link. However, as the number of deaths increase, the population size will decrease. These two variables move in opposite directions, making it a negative causal link. We use a minus sign to denote a negative link. When the causal links create a closed loop or a closed circle like we have on both sides of population size, we call this a feedback loop. The change starts at population size and comes back to population size again. If the links around the circle end up amplifying the starting variable, then it's a reinforcing feedback loop. We put an R to denote a reinforcing feedback loop. If the, loop, if the loop balances a starting variable, then it's called a balancing feedback loop, and we put a B in the middle. In this example, 
the birth loop increases population size, so it's a reinforcing loop, whereas the death balances the population size, making it a balancing feedback loop. The last component is time delays. Sometimes the causal relationship takes time to have an effect. For example, the increase in births doesn't happen immediately from an increase in the population size. It takes years for our babies to grow into adults and begin having babies of their own. So we can put a time delay symbol on this link. Same thing for population size and deaths. It takes time for the babies to grow and affect the death rate. So we can put a delay symbol on this link as well. And those are the basic components needed to create a causal loop diagram. Let's recap the components one more time for you. Stock variables can accumulate over time, such as population size. Flow variables, such as births and deaths, do not accumulate over time, but change flows through them. Link polarities represent the causal influence between variables. If the cause and effect variables move in the same direction, such as the effect of births on population size, then it's a positive link, denoted with a plus sign. But if the cause and effect variables move in the opposite direction, such as the effect of deaths on population size, then it's a negative relationship, denoted with a minus sign. When there's a closed, when there's a closed circle, we call it a feedback loop. Feedback loops are denoted with an R for reinforcing if the initial condition is amplified, and if the initial condition is balanced, it's denoted with a B. Lastly, if there's a delay in the cause and effect relationship, then the link polarity has a time delay sign added to it. And there you have the main components of a causal loop diagram. In our next video, we will be represent, or presenting the causal loop diagram that was created during the modeling session of the case study.